Hi, I'm attorney Joyce Cooper with A.G. Owens & Cooper in Nashville, Tennessee, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and McMinnville, Tennessee. I am talking with you today from my office in McMinnville, and we're going to talk about conservatorships and powers of attorney. If you are anything like me, you probably have aging loved ones. Um, it's an unfortunate reality of life that sometimes the people we love lose the ability to manage their own affairs, whether that's health care decisions or finances or real estate or what have you. And speaking very broadly, there are two ways to approach this problem. The first is with a power of attorney. And a power of attorney is a legal document that a, a competent adult can sign that gives a child or a sibling or another trusted individual the authority to manage affairs on that person's behalf if they become incapacitated, um, if they're diagnosed with mental illness, um, or if for whatever other reason they're unable to manage their own affairs. These documents are typically not terribly expensive to have drafted. Um, if you are in a position where you can have a conversation with siblings, children, aunts and uncles, parents, and arrange to have a power of attorney executed, this is definitely the easiest and least expensive way to manage the problem. Uh, the second option is conservatorships, and that is what we do when uh, an elderly loved one has lost the ability to manage their own affairs and there are no legal documents in place establishing a person to do that for them. And so usually in that case, a sibling or a child has to petition the court for an order giving the petitioner the right to manage the elderly person's affairs. When that happens, you have to pay the attorney who files the petition for conservatorship. There are usually at least a couple of court appearances involved. The court will appoint a second attorney to investigate the matter and report back to the court regarding whether it's in the best interest of the elderly person or not. And you have to pay that attorney too. So at the end of the process, generally, assuming that everything is done in good faith and above board, the child or sibling or other relative of the elderly person gets the right to manage that person's affairs and is called the conservator. Now after that, as the conservator, you have to file inventories of that person's assets and you have to file accountings with the court to keep the court apprised every year of how you're managing that person's assets and whether you're managing them responsibly. So when it's all said and done, you've had to pay two attorneys, you've had to go through a long and sometimes stressful legal process, and you have a continuing obligation to the court every year until your loved one passes. And that, that can add a lot of emotional stress and difficulty at a time when um, just helping your loved ones is is hard enough. So to conclude, I've given you sort of an overview of the difference between a power of attorney and a conservatorship and I really want to encourage anybody who's watching this to have conversations with your children, your siblings, your parents and establish what the elderly members of your family want to have happen and who they want to manage their affairs if there ever comes a time when they cannot do it themselves. If you can take care of those things um, ahead of time and take care of them with powers of attorney, it will save time and money and stress and heartache for everybody involved. Uh, regardless of what you need to do based on your family circumstances, when you're ready to contact an attorney, you are welcome to call me, Joyce Cooper, at 931-507-1000. And you can find our firm on the web at www.agowenscooper.com.